special guest joining us from, I'm not sure if it's New York City or Washington, D.C., but somewhere on the eastern seaboard of the United States. Um, and let me, let me introduce my friend Aaron Sherinian in, in one sentence. If there was a human manifestation of all of social media, okay, if Facebook, Twitter, blogging, and, and microblogging, and all sorts of other things that we consider social media, YouTube, were to be embodied in one person, that would be Aaron Sherinian, okay? Aaron lived in Armenia for a long while. He was a U.S. diplomat, and he's moved on to becoming a global social good ambassador, okay? And without further ado, we're going to get Aaron in to kick us off for, the t for tonight and for the next three hours where we're going to be talking about how are we going to use technology to create solutions in our communities. Aaron? This is a big day for the world, for those of us who are watching the power of social media and how technology and social media can help us to change the world. Thank you for letting me spend a couple of minutes with you. I wanted to say a special hello to people who are there in the room for a couple of reasons. You are people who inspire me, who inspire so many people around the world, and you're also a couple of people who know some of my deepest, darkest secrets. So I want to make sure that we can be friendly today and have an open dialogue. Salfi, as I was listening to you open up the session today in Yerevan, you pinpointed what we are seeing happening today in New York City, and more importantly, in 231 spots around the world. And I want people to think about it for a second. What you are doing in Yerevan is happening in 231 places. They now, have arrived. They, they are there. And what is happening is that these meetings are people who are aware of the power of technology. They have the voice to inspire and to impact and to hold accountable governments, civil society organizations, and media outlets. They have the ability and the wherewithal to do that. So 231 groups like you make up a powerful, powerful chorus for good around the world. That's happening in 100 plus countries. And a couple of themes that are happening out of the Social Good Summit I'd like to talk about today, this global conversation that has emerged. I'm hearing a couple of things. So if you don't mind, I'd like to give you the update from the floor, the update from the moment, if you will, here at the Social Good Summit. We just completed a conversation with Nairobi, Kenya. And overnight, we had an amazing conversation with Kuala Lumpur. I'm hearing a couple of things. The first thing I'm hearing is, remember, as we talk about social media and technology today, it's about people, not just the platform. So there's all this excitement about the technology and what it does and how we can use Pinterest and how we can use Facebook and how we can use YouTube and how we can connect together. At the heart of all of this is a person's life, is a person's res the, the respect for the person's uh, rights, the fact that there are human needs behind everything that we're doing as we go with technology. And we forget that some all of the excitement and the enthusiasm and the newness world where technology is pumping out a new platform every day, a new phone, a new way to connect yourself, but the people focus has got, to, has got to be there. The other thing that we're hearing at the Social Good Summit is to remember that these powers of technology can be used not only from the bottom up to affect change, but from the top down. We need to remember that as we're monitoring what's happening, that there has to be dialogue at the center of it. What does that mean? Let's do an example. See a grass movement that's evolving and people in civil society talking to and holding accountable governments. Is there exchange with the government? Is there exchange with the policymaker? Or are we screaming at them? Uh, the, the other thing that we're hearing from the Social Good Summit, Salfi, is that we've got to look at how to take social media and address problems at scale. Let me use a quick statistic to drive home this point. There are in the world today one billion people who will never get to see a doctor. Mothers who won't be able to deliver a child with the help of a healthcare worker. People with serious conditions who will never seek medical attention. One billion people. At the same time today, we are at the cusp of seeing the world's next billion people get their first cell phone. Think for a minute about what that means, the threshold, the, the crossroads where we are as a world. One billion people will never see a healthcare worker and one billion people are about to get their first cell phone. And these are smart cell phones than ever. Social media should be used to leverage those big problems. 
so that as these women and men around the world get their first cell phone, they have the way to use social media to talk about health issues, to talk about information, basic information related to disease, related to vaccines, related to women's health. The question and the, uh, the admonishment we're hearing from the world is to please identify those big opportunities where social media, because of its huge scale, it's not a tool that you just use search. It's a tool that can be employed both search, also at scale, can be leveraged. Salpi, this is what excites me. It excites me when you have the people who are talking and who are conversing and who are out there aren't just saying how out. They're saying for what. That is a key component of what's happening around the world with the social consumption. I hope that as we continue this, this global conversation, we can hear from you because I want to share with people how you are using social media to help address the problems in your community, drive change that is lasting and not just about a lot of noise, but about a lot of impact. Aaron, thank you for the question. I think, I think that's, uh, I'm going to ask you for your permission not to answer the question right now. What we're going to do is we're going to keep asking that question of all the young people who are gathered here tonight. Uh, because really, what we do is we sit in our perches in, in, in uh, Yerevan and we talk about what we could do with social media. But these guys, everyone in this studio right now, uh, they're the ones who actually do use social media to connect. And I'll give you one simple example. About Two months ago, we held a youth leadership camp with uh, about 40 young people. And you know, the week after that youth leadership camp, um, a Facebook, private Facebook page popped up. Uh, and all 40 of them were on the page. And I, as a secret young person, wishful young person, have been kind of sneaking in and looking at what they're doing. And you would be surprised. We have people like Marina Harutunyan, who's, who's you know, leading an army of young people across <laughs> Armenia to do things like trash collection in their communities, right? You, you remember, some of our, some of our towns have, have major trash problems. So I'll see once in a while, she'll send a, a note out on this p Facebook page saying, this Saturday, all of us get out there and clean the streets, clean the parks, right? I mean, small things like this, all the way, all the way to doing things like trainings online, doing things like discussion groups online, just to learn from one another. But to get more into that question, I'm going to ask again for your permission to go back to, to the audience later on this evening, but I promise to get the answers back to you. Great. We're, we're counting on those answers because the problems that you outlined show that there's a direct connection to daily life. This is not about the academic or the ethereal. This is about what happens in my community, my backyard, and around the world. So I love the question because we talked about scale, but when we're talking about civil society and change, those problems affect me personally, and when they happen around the world, that's the scale we're talking about. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, any, any parting words for us uh, as we go on to the next few hours of our, of our Social Good Summit? Um, anything that you can share with us that we should be watching out for? First of all, I don't want to leave you. I'd love to stay there with you all night and talk about what's going on. There's a couple of, of points I wanted to make sure that, that you're aware of. As we've been here and we've had thousands of people, and we will have had hundreds of thousands of people by the end of the day here, we have had an important reminder where people have said to me personally, and they've said to technology leaders from Google, from Yahoo, from Facebook, from around the world, they have said, let's stop saying social media is coming, social media is coming, social media is coming. Let's stop that. Let's say it's here. What are we doing with it? And so I, that's why I'm glad to hear that you, at this seminar, you are focusing in on those very real, everyday problems that at scale help us to address the world's challenges. That would be my, my hope to hear coming out of Yerevan, because if I know one thing about Armenia and the people of Armenia, a place that I love, a place where my heart is every day of my life, it's that there's a number of natural resources that are there, and one natural resource that is never uh, wanting is talk. But talk has to do something. And that's the difference with social media, because people are listening to the talk in Yerevan. They're listening to the talk in Armenia. And they're also monitoring that level of engagement. And if it's about real life, if it's about real problems, if it's about actually making change with civil society. So I hope that as, as you begin these discussions, as you report back to us, because I've got my eye on Yerevan, and I want to be able to report to everyone that I, I talk to that we, that we have this dialogue, please give us those examples of what's needed, what's worked, and what's next. 
And I just want to tell all of you again, thanks for being part of a global conversation. Thank you for helping us drive this dialogue. People are watching us, and it's making a difference around the world. Thank you so much, Aaron. We're going to take your words to heart, and we promise to get back some of those answers to you. And just as a reminder to all of us, hashtag SGS um, Global. Correct. Gl glo SGS Global and hashtag Armenia. Are, is where the answers are going to be compiled. So we'll definitely get them to you. Thank you once more very much for being with us, yep. and good luck on the floor. Take our message to the, to the rest of the world. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Aaron.